What does it mean when somebody says you're being disrespectful? Well, we have to ask ourselves, do we want the actual definition of the word and the real true underlying root meaning of it? Or do we want the worldly, uh, manly uh, definition of it? People throw around this word, especially men, disrespect. Like, you're disrespecting me. You're being disrespectful to me. Don't disrespect me. But oftentimes when we use that word, we use it in, in a tone that sounds angry, uh, etc., etc. Hey, neighbors. Welcome to the Shed Shop. This guy is messaging me about the 064 fever saw, and he wants to buy the 064 in the box, and he doesn't realize. Fat chance, neighbor. Ain't no way in hell I'm selling you a full one owner 064 saw without getting to put it back together. <laughs> and play with it with my chainsaw mill. Sorry, neighbor. I gotta have that footage for this channel, too. We're almost at the first stage of monetization. I can't lose that footage well i can but i don't want to anyways back to it neighbors what is the definition of respect well there's slight variances but most start this way a regard for one's feelings or emotions skills talents attributes time etc etc do we understand what that really is saying? Regard for one's feelings or emotions. Skills, talent, time, attribute, etc. So I could say, sometimes I'll have neighbors that are disrespectful because they know I'm working in a tiny space and I'll ask them very nicely to come get their stuff. I even say they can come get it without paying their bill. And then they make an appointment to come get it and they don't come get it. This happens to me nonstop, neighbors non-stop and then people tell me i'm disrespectful when i say you're withholding my paycheck you are you're preventing me from making money you are what's the definition of disrespect a disregard disregard for one's feelings emotions attributes skills talents time etc etc so realistically, we need to stop pretending we're human beings without fucking emotions. Stop being hard asses. Stop acting like it's not okay to have feelings. And just talk this shit out. You know? Uh, on my bench I have a steel 025. And this saw has been part of this channel almost from the very beginning it is one of the very first 025s on my channel and i initially sold this saw to the timber bros tree service they're being disrespectful right now love you boys but your saw sits here and sits here and sits here and sits here every time it has to come here and y'all know i don't have space and i offer to deliver it to you guys that's not okay, you guys. It's really not. We gotta stop doing this kind of shit to each other. But you see, once I say something, I'll lose business, okay? But I really don't care anymore. I want to enjoy life. I'm disabled. Government took my disability benefits. This is just a hobby to me, and it's an expensive one. So I'm only gonna um, have clients and customers that can be respectful, and if they're not, accept that I should have a right to say, you're being disrespectful leaving your chit here for months on end. You're being disrespectful for leaving your chit here months on end. Not this guy's shit. Can you guys see his info? You probably can. I'll probably have to blur that chit. Damn it. Uh, I didn't mean that saw anyway. Sorry, neighbors. I meant the one behind this box and then the one next to it. Months on end. God's supposed to come the other day. Okay. Why is all that coming up on this video about this saw? Well, because it's part of the picture as a whole and this saw has been here from the beginning of this shed. This was one of the very first saws I bought in Tennessee uh, and one of the very first lots of saws I bought. This was part of it, okay? I built this saw for the Timber Bros Tree Service 
and uh, I did them dirty on their bar and chain. Long story, not going to get into it. You have to go to the playlist, I did you dirty. You have to go to the playlist, Timber Bros MS310, uh, the playlist 025 series, and you'll find all those videos somewhere in the mess, okay? Um, anyways, they decided to change to an MS250. They liked that it matched their MS310 better uh, because it's a newer curved kind of style. I think the uh, the uh, 025 is a better saw. Myself, I think it puts a little more horsepower and a little more torque out, but that's just my opinion. A lot of guys agree with that, but uh, some guys don't. Either way, um, then neighbor Kyle messaged me one day on Facebook, and he ended up buying the saw along in the short. Um, and uh, with the Timber Bros, it had some issues in the beginning. We got them worked out, and then it started having issues again. I got them worked out. Um, uh, that was before they ever took the saw home. They took it home one day, and I told them, you got to bring it back. I sent you with a, a filthy, vile, dirty, disgusting bar and chain, and you're going to blow that saw up, okay? Um, I was very tired. Church had me tired. Anyways, uh, to get back on point, because it's supposed to be a short intro, and it's not. Um, uh, Kyle, Kyle bought the saw, and uh, it was working fine. I had tons of footage of this saw cutting, and Kyle told me he's having issues with it. Uh, Kyle brings the saw back. I find an air leak. Um, I find an air leak at the intake boot. The the white shroud. Do I still have that laying right on top of the pile? I do not. Of course not. As soon as it's out for months and months and months until I need it. Uh, the white shroud that goes uh, over the intake boot and kind of holds it in place was warped. And that saw had an air leak. So I rebuilt his saw. He took it home. or I, It was working fine in my driveway. Again, it's a long story. This thing's... All kinds of sporadic, but we're going to do some diagnostics. This is a doctor diagnostics video. Uh, this is a you did me dirty video. This is a how to video. Uh, and this is just a chainsaw redeemer's messy life video. Um, lots of cop footage and all kinds of stuff coming up for you, by the way. So stay tuned, damn it, if you like that shit and not this shit. Uh, basically, so he brings the saw back again. I upgraded him to a 311 just because he had helped the shed shop a lot. But why are we talking about Kyle? This saw, respect disrespect space money time everything else well because again it's all about the whole picture it's about vulnerability of a human being being shared with you on the internet to make your life better and easier and let you know you're not alone i'm not here to get popular and have fancy videos and this and that yeah we're gonna do some of that good shit we have to it's how you bring people in we got to get the channel monetized or i cannot continue i'm in too much pain I can't do this. I cannot drive like I've been doing, you guys. I can't do it no more. I'm pushing too hard. And so, this saw's on my bench right now because I'm thinking this is a beautiful 025 that runs but is bipolar as hell. Okay? Um, and when I got the new Mighty Vac vacuum pressure tester because my other one went bad, I did a quick pressure test through the fuel line. Here's what we have, neighbor. Um... I was thinking, I think a lot, not a lot. What did I do wrong on this saw? Where did I go wrong? What is the issue? What have I not checked? What have I missed? Uh, what could it possibly be? Because when it's, here's what happens. A lot of times when, when a shop or whatever, a guy can't figure it out, that saw ends up in the circle of going across the country hundreds of times. People tear it apart. It gets parts parted out, whatever. Those all kinds of different things happen. I don't do that chip. I set it aside and I think and think and think and think and think and think. Okay, I'm going to figure out what the hell's wrong with it. Okay, because I'm not going to sell it. And if I do, uh, and something goes wrong, it has to come back. Just like this one has twice now. Okay, from two different owners. It's really weird. Why is this saw still here? I don't know. I don't know, neighbors. I don't know. Divinity, coinkadink, sabotage, aliens, government. Uh, I'll have an alternate ego and personality that I don't know about. And that's why I never sleep. Or think I never sleep and then think I sleep too much. Who knows, neighbors? Uh, but the point is that right now, um, it's about the shed shop is going through trials right now. Uh, I had to reject my building, you guys. Uh, this video really largely is for the current subscribers, the loyal people that are watching all my videos that care. Uh, that this impacts their lives. Even if it's only three of you, five of you, ten of you. It's not all 400 and... What are we at, you guys? 460, I think? 440? Uh, subscribers right now I never would have thought honestly um, but it's for the 10 20 that are here for like every single video okay 
Um, and if you've just stumbled across this and happen to still be here, don't leave. Got some good shit for you. Live shit. This isn't just numb your brain entertainment, watch some random shit on YouTube. Not this channel. Some of it will be, don't worry. But not all of it. Um, where were we at, neighbors? Cal and I's relationship has not worked out, unfortunately. And uh, you know some of that story already. And I'm not quite ready to talk uh, all the way about it. But he still watches the channel. Um, I'll leave it at that, okay? Um, and so basically, I had been thinking and thinking. That's right, racking my brain, thinking about what the hell could be the problem with this saw. What is it? It's got to be one of those things that you really just have to be able to sit down and diagnose the issue. Whatever it takes. You've got to test every little line, every little hose. The carburetor is presenting air leak, but this all sat for months, as we discovered with the 570. And I'm discovering a lot. A lot of times the gaskets on those carburetors just run the saw a few minutes. And then that air leak on that gasket of that carburetor, the fuel soaking that that gasket seals it. I don't know. I don't quite understand that science. I get it, but I don't. Okay. Um, that might be our problem. It might not be, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our carburetor off and start right there. Okay. And then I've got right here, something really fun coming up for us guys. We're really going to have fun. I started this channel to make my life, um, less shitty, honestly, um, to help, to help me sell an occasional chainsaw. And so people could see a good running saw on a video. Uh, because it was eBay uh, that I used to sell on mostly and so I thought that's what I would try again um, and unfortunately the, the circumstances of life are that my trailer's falling apart my uncle uh, bless his heart I love him but he does me dirty and he's got shitty character in a lot of ways and that includes his responsibility with his money he gives his money to scammers and he knows I, I profess this to you guys uh, he doesn't like it but he accepts it, okay? Me and my uncle have our relationship. A lot of you guys be nice to your uncle. You don't see um, behind closed doors all the nice things me and my uncle do for one another. Um, uh, he's he's doing them less and less lately. And I mentioned that to him yesterday that, that I, I asked if I was doing something wrong. Uh, was he upset with me? And he said definitely not. It's just him. But that's the thing. His shitty character, that's what his shitty character does. He forgets about other people. Uh, that's not to say he doesn't care. He just falls into depression and and TV and food okay that, that's his life okay and I, I, I can relate to that I've been there um, and I understand and so that being said um, uh, I want to get back to the fun that 450 up there uh, that we're gonna play a diagnostics game on that and we're gonna give away prizes when we do it and you guys are gonna accept your damn prizes if you claim them damn it Robert you still did me dirty on that sprocket neighbor but it's okay i put it on a saw that sold no fret neighbor okay um that being said let's go ahead and turn you down to the bench uh and take the carburetor off and i'm going to talk about more chit while we do this so if you don't want to hear it this is not just a saw this is um this is my life this is the life of people this is me being very confused uh at, at why people don't understand me okay and why people bully you into uh calling them friend and then disappear i've had that happen many a time in my life i don't call people friend because that word to me i don't know uh it means you never leave no matter how hot it gets no matter how hard it gets no matter how messy it gets no matter how wet it gets you just don't you don't abandon your friends stop abandoning your fucking neighbors stop leaving your neighbors people all of you out there okay I don't get you guys. I love all of you neighbors, but shit, come on. Why is everybody so shitty? Fuck. Just be nice. And if somebody's not nice to you, ask why weren't they nice to you? Was it your fault? Did you make their day worse because they were having a bad day and maybe weren't nice to you? They had no right to do that. But everybody's so stubborn and prideful. Just because somebody else is an asshole, you're going to be an asshole. And the problem is, now we're all assholes. Come on, guys. Turn it around. Don't be the same. Be the change. Trademarked.
Anytime you hear me say trademark, damn it, I've submitted a redneck trademark request on different things because I have merchandise printed out. Okay? <laughs> you can use my sayings if you want. Just please understand. All I want is please give me credit. And if you don't, oh well. Anyways, let's get to work, neighbors. One thing I'm going to have to look at is footage to see why the hell is there a black rope in here? I don't know you did chip. I don't know why it's in here. Maybe I never changed it, but uh, I couldn't see me having this all in my hands this many times and never noticing that. But we'll look and see what the hell has happened. Okay, so here we go, neighbors. We're literally just going to um, get our carburetor off and get our mighty back out, okay? So I'll show you how to get the carburetor off real quick. Air filter. Well, that actually doesn't have to come off. I do that every time. Don't know why. Uh, you're going to need an 8 mil socket, okay? Just take these two 8 mil bolts off. See, his tank vent is soaked. It looks like, yeah, it is. Looks like gas has come out of it. Uh, but the thing is, we had a duckbill tank vent on this, just an aftermarket duckbill tank vent. And then uh, I told Kyle, well, I want to try a different tank vent because even though it's an 025 and it just had a regular hose with two set screws in it, this is what they use on the 250s and 290s and stuff now. And so I thought, let's try that. Damn it. I, I got ahead of myself, guys. Sorry. Um, this is the thing. I'm very distracted right now because I care more about people than I do fucking chainsaws. It's kind of sad, but I just think people are shitty and I don't, I don't like giving up on people. Um, but I just get tired of people being so shitty. I really do. Okay, so we have to release our choke lever first. Sorry. And then that can come out. Okay, and plug that from there. Just to get it out of our way. Okay, and then pull your, your throttle in. Okay. And, uh, you can unhook your throttle lever from your trigger right there. Okay. And then it will twist off and unhook. Okay, and then... Uh, we're gonna need, well, see, this is another thing. I get done so dirty by people that somebody walked off with their saw, um, without paying, and my hemostats were attached to their saw. Uh, they were mad that their saw wasn't done in, uh, the two weeks that they thought they were told when they were told it was a minimum of two weeks lead time. Anyways, um... So that means I need to loosen this cap a little bit. I don't know. I know there's fuel in this. Yeah, it's pretty much fuel. And he used the uh, premix stuff. So we'll go ahead and pull our fuel line and plug it. The funny thing is, uh, I've never seen an 025 have, have this many issues. But the, the issues got significantly worse uh, when Kyle became owner of the saw. And it's funny because I did a lot of cutting with it. He did a lot of cutting with it. And, and the problems just weren't there. And I got to wondering if it's this, this pre-mixed fuel. This saw just might not like it. Okay, there's our carburetor. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our saw aside for now. We'll get our mighty vac out. Let me pause you guys. Okay, all I've done here is uh, I have a piece of fuel line I keep attached to one of my attachments. So that it's easy to hook the carburetors. And I don't have to worry too much about leaking um, at the attachment here because it's fuel on. Okay, and then we're just going to go to about 7.5 to 10 pounds pressure. And as you can see, we are leaking down quite quickly. Okay, uh, the question is inlet needle or seam? As you can see, look at all that liquid that just came out. That's gas from inside the car carb that's being pushed out the seam. I'm guessing it's the seam over here. So what I'm going to do real quick is just say, is that loose? No, it is not. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my uh, metering diaphragm on this side. Okay. Okay. Now I've got that off. Um, the thing is what we want to do is check and see if it's our inlet needle leaking okay when we pressure test a carburetor uh, the two things we're looking at is um, is this inlet needle has to be seated inside the carburetor down there 
Otherwise, the air passes through, fuel essentially passes through, and your saw will flood and not get the right fuel mixture. Okay, so we can go ahead and um, load this up with air again, and we'll push down on that needle just to see if we get a, a decrease in the leak down time. We do not. Now listen, that's what I'm talking about, okay? We do not. So I will spray this with soapy water and see if we get bubbles to present. We do not. See, that would have blown bubbles if it was leaking, okay? It would blow bubbles right there. So, it's not because of our inlet needle not seating, okay? It is our gasket, but the question is, is it simply because this saw sat with no fuel hitting the gasket for so long? Or is it a, a deeper issue like our, our cover is concaved? We do not know, but... I just want to take this off to look at it real quick because the thing I have been thinking is I'm like, yeah, lots of fuel in there. The thing I have been thinking is, uh, damn, didn't want that to happen. Let me clean that. I had been thinking, I don't remember now. Uh, the only thing I haven't really tried on this saw is I don't think I have. I've ripped our gasket now. I saw that. I was going to say, I thought that was a brand new gasket. So that's no good now. We'll have to uh, use another one. I only have like five of these, but I have like 50 in the mail coming from China. So we'll be okay. Uh, I haven't tried a new carburetor on this saw. I think we've, we've tried a different tank vent. We've tried a different type of plug than it actually calls for. Um, but I've used the same plug I use in all my O25s, even if it's not right. I usually use a Champion RCJ7Y or an NGK BPR, BPMR7A. Um, I think it calls for a 6 or something, but I don't know. Um, so the next thing we can do is test our fuel line. Now, the way we do that is I'm going to crimp it as high as I can up here. Normally, you would do it on the other side. Well, we will. Okay. We will. We'll do it right. Okay, I just don't have my small hemostats, so it's kind of hard. It's hard to crimp the inside here, but we will get our fuel filter fished out. And we're gonna test and see if our, our fuel line might be bad, but because I thought I also went ahead and replaced his fuel line again uh, the first time he brought his saw back to me. I just replaced certain things that might have been the issue because I didn't have time to sit here and do this. I really don't now, but I mean, uh, I guess I do. I'm a, I'm a lot caught up. I haven't been taking in a lot of new work. Um, I've had to refuse a lot of work. Okay, so we're gonna crimp this right here as close to the end as possible, okay, with our hemostats. I don't know if these big ones will seal it off good. I think they did, okay. And then we're gonna take our vacuum pressure tester Go up here and I'm first going to apply pressure, uh, not, maybe not the best fitting, apply pressure to see if it will hold 10 pounds and not bubble up and it does not neighbors. So now the thing is, where is it leaking? I always like to find out for sure because I'm thinking why would, yeah see we're leaking right here where I plugged up, okay into my into my uh, fuel line. So let me get a different attachment here. I don't think this one will be better. Yes, it is. Okay, that should seal that a little bit more. Okay. Now that's loose on that. Boy. Okay, now let's try this again. It, it does appear to be holding. Um, it doesn't appear to be bubbling up. So it has uh, it has basically 30 seconds. It has to hold this pressure and vacuum without either bubbling or collapsing in on itself. 
and it could be neighbors i did try i think i tried a different type of a uh, different brand of aftermarket fuel line on this it could be that the fuel line's collapsing that's the thing though sometimes you have to test these different things you have to figure out what's going on because just replacing everything what if i have bad fuel lines and i'll just keep replacing it with bad fuel lines from a bad batch of fuel lines you know when you order this stuff 50 at a time what if you got an entire bad batch uh these things happen and when you have the kind of luck i have the the astronomically unlikely things that shouldn't happen in life happen to me so that looks good we'll go ahead and switch this over to pressure and now we're looking that we need to make sure this fuel line doesn't collapse on itself i can't see all of it but what i can see it doesn't appear to be collapsing anywhere i do not think we have a bad fuel line No, I, I, I think our fuel line's good, neighbors. I really do. Okay? Even a pinhole in these things, though, can cause you issues and nightmares. Okay? Yeah, we're just, we're holding solid. No change. All right, so we'll go ahead and put our fuel pickup body back on. And uh, the thing is, guys, this is, uh, I have vacuum pressure tested this saw, but not with the new Mighty Vac. And so that would be the next step is I'm like, okay, do I have an air leak at my intake boot again or something? Because again, I put a brand new, another brand new OEM intake boot on this thing. Um, it is just a, a bipolar saw. And I do believe it, it leads me down to the carburetor it has to be the culprit. It has to be. Um, it's very rare I replace a carburetor completely because usually there's something gooped up inside or something. Uh, but this thing has been cleaned a couple of times and I do believe rebuilt a couple of times actually. Uh, I look at our, our metering lever and it's it's basically where it needs to be. Okay. Close enough that it wouldn't be causing the issues of the saw is having to the level it's having. Okay. It's hard to explain, but uh, I look at our screen, it's clean. And so I don't know, I think that's the culprit, but I don't know. The next thing that needs to be done is a vacuum pressure test. So I'm gonna set up to do that and we'll see if we have an air leak. Well, hell, that took entirely too long. Uh, but just so you guys know, I have also uh, replaced the coil on this thing too. Um, I cannot recollect if I did the flywheel or not. But if I vacuum pressure test this all as well, I'll replace the carburetor. And if that doesn't... So sorry, neighbors, my neck pain is so bad I, I feel like puking. Some days it's like that. <sighs> That's the reality of my life. Uh, we'll replace the carburetor if we pass vac pressure, which I think we will. I've, as I said, I've rebuilt the saw a couple of times. Well, we're not passing vacuum right now. That's for sure. So we'll switch to pressure. We are showing a leak. It very well could be human human error though. Mm, the dog wants in. Even though I'm about to go inside. Yeah, it's very slow. It's probably at one of my fitments, I'm guessing. Could be at the muffler fitment the hard thing is with this saw uh it's it's really difficult to explain but you cannot see very well your muffler lock off or your spark plug port the way this saw is designed so oftentimes i will go to my muffler right away and see did i tighten that up enough because you really just do need a snug with a rubber but sometimes it doesn't quite work Yeah, it's just leaking down, neighbors. And I have no clue why. 
So if this thing blew another crankshaft seal or something, I'm going to be freaking shocked as hell. I really am. Uh, but that's the thing. The only way to know is to tear it down now. Okay? The only way to know is to tear it down. Because you can't just take this off. Because then you can't attach here to properly test unless you've cut a handle apart. I have not done that for this model yet because I shouldn't have to. Uh, I'm not seeing any leak. That's obvious. And I can't get down behind to see if it's my muffler thing, unfortunately. So the only thing you can do is spray and see if a bunch of air bubbles start coming out. A bunch of blown bubbles start coming out. Uh, it's crazy if if this thing did. I mean that that means Pharmatech has done me dirty on the crankshaft seals. Uh, last time it wasn't the crankshaft seals that went bad, but I put crankshafts Pharmatech crankshaft seals in this, so there's no reason they shouldn't they should have failed. Uh, the saw was fine initially and then started having problems again. Uh, I think we have a bad crankshaft seal. Let me pause you. Should we find out? Let me tear this saw down real quick, neighbors. I don't want to make the video too long. Shit. Okay, I got the clutch side exposed. Should we test it? See if there's a damn uh, bad crankshaft seal over here. Maybe our Permatex is bad or something. I don't know. Uh, it looks like it's white. Uh, gray Permatex doesn't usually turn white. At least not to my knowledge. Anyways, let's get some pressure to this bad boy. Showing nothing over here. Nothing presents air over here. Okay. So, oh wait, there it is. Uh, it's not. That's the funny thing. It's not presenting. At. Uh, oh wait a minute. That's not coming from our crankshaft seal, neighbors. That's coming from somewhere behind. Okay. Uh, I might have just blown our permatex out, or that. Now I don't know. But this thing was clearly presenting air leak and I'm not finding it any obvious anywhere else. So let's go ahead. I'll pause you and get the other side exposed. Okay, neighbors. Here is a good opportunity. Uh, I want to show you something with these crankshaft seals. Okay. Um, these are cheap. I, I thought I could have sworn. Maybe. No, I, I think Kyle and I did have a discussion. Damn it. It's too bad I can't ask him. I have to look at my footage and see if I mention it. Um, because he's literally right around the corner. I've been trying to test. Um these crankshaft seals that I have have gotten that I thought were knockoff highways I think somebody was knocking off aftermarket it's pretty sad but I think that's the reality of it uh, this thing looks kind of weird and burnt up the dust lip but uh, at the same time I haven't tested it yet so let's test it okay it doesn't present leak And I'm still not seeing where we were leaking before. Uh, I'm not able to see clearly what is leaking over here. And I don't know that we will be able to. It is almost as if it's... Uh, it's al it is. It's almost as if it's the Permatex behind the it really bugs me I really would like to know but I did pump this bitch up way deep or way high but that is a good thing though because if you think about the amount of pressure being created inside this freaking uh, inside this uh, motor probably why the saw is bipolar because it's only leaking under that heavy pressure of the stroke doesn't leak at five pounds doesn't leak at seven I would think we'd get something nope nothing 
See? It's a sporadic air leak, neighbors. It's hiding on me. 10 pounds, it's still not presenting. It's kind of like the Nightmare 441. We probably have some random freaking hole in our engine pan or something with this shit. So weird, it's just not presenting. Damn, I'll be damned. That's 10 pounds and it won't present. Yeah, it just doesn't want to present now. I'll be damned. I mean, it's such a heavy leak, though. I, I would. It seems to me that that can't be right. That let me spray our impulse back here. Sometimes that leaks even with this attachment, the specialty attachment. I don't think we're leaking back there at all. It is a fast damn leak, man. Really fast. I mean, just incredibly fast. A very fast leak. It really is. It's a fast fucking leak. I would think it would be obvious where it is. I would think we'd have bubbles coming out of everywhere. This is crazy. Man. It's not our impulse hose. It's not our intake boot. Oh, there we go, neighbors. There's some bubbles presenting at our crankshaft seal. It just takes time. Ha! Ah, that's funny. I have said this before. This is excellent. The worst place I have these sons of bitches leak. Neighbors, this is fantastic. Right here. Okay? Right here. Where your pan and your motor meet together. Right fucking here. Oh, right there, neighbors. And I'll almost guarantee you that's what's leaking on the other side. Damn, do I have a pan right in front of me? I might have to go inside just to get this shit. Nobody's here except a couple of you. But you're going to know what I'm talking about if you're the few that I think are here. Okay, listen. This is slightly different motor. Okay? But almost identical. Okay? The only difference is on the 250. This is a 170. On the 250, the pan doesn't bolt to the motor first. It all bolts as one. But this groove I want to show you. I believe it's the same on this motor, okay? Okay, here you go, neighbors. You have on this pan this little groove right here, okay? And where it drops down into the uh, bearing cavity, or the crankshaft seal cavity, I'm sorry. Right there, okay? They tend to leak right there and come out right here, okay? That's what we're looking at right here. That's where it's leaking. It's sneaking out right there. That's why the saw is bipolar. It's leaking fast and slow at the same time. It's weird. Uh, it is a very fast leak, but it doesn't present very easily. Uh, as you guys can see, I was struggling to get bubbles. Okay. Uh, which I just want to make sure I don't have like some other major obvious freaking leak. And so what do we do? This is why, okay, that's gonna be the end of the, the, the work on the saw. That's our obvious air leak. This is a, a good motor. I could have sold that saw as is, neighbors. I probably wouldn't have really lost any business because in this business, people are saying you do them dirty all the time. Uh, word of mouth is the greatest advertisement for just about any business, but um, if you have enough good word of mouth you just hope that that one bad word of mouth doesn't destroy your reputation. But if, if your neighbors know you well enough, um, 
the the few that think you're doing them dirty just because they're shitty people or have been done really shitty um they don't they don't tip the scales against your favor uh but that that's why i mean honestly like yeah it sucks i've had to go through so much with this saw why does it keep doing shit like this i don't know um there, you can see i did heavy permatex so it didn't leak like that okay uh, i don't know what's going on there okay it could be that the pan somebody has sanded it to get stuff off of it and it's just they've taken too much material and the crankshaft seal might be getting squished a little bit and uh we can't get a proper seal there the permatex could be working itself out that's why it's working fine at first i don't know i don't know but the thing is i don't want to just wonder um I do see I did use the cheaper crankshaft seals in this, so I will put uh, Pharmatex in this next time, okay? And we'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, I'm still going to use the gray moto seal, but this is a saw I'll keep around for a while maybe and see what happens since it's had so many problems, or I'll have to keep it local. I will have to. Somebody that is very close by, like Lewisburg, basically, Marshall County. Um, and so, but that's why it sucks that I have to carry all of this weight. But I don't want my neighbor, uh, that's not their fault. Is it my fault? Very unlikely. That That is unlikely. Anything I did wrong, it's just sheer astronomical unlikely odds. But I know I have bad luck. And so I don't want my neighbors to suffer my bad luck too. Uh, but, but that's why. That's why, neighbor Kyle, I don't call people friend. That's why, neighbor. Okay? That's why I'm unhinged. That kind of shitty luck. And I'm carrying all that shitty luck alone. And other people bring their shitty luck into my shop. And I carry it without their help. Okay. Uh, neighbor Blake's 028 was finished. Good to go. But minus a bad bearing. We had a bearing uh, present bad shortly after running the saw. I didn't replace him. I don't always. But he's right across the street. A lot of factors go into my decisions. Um, what I do and don't do to saws. You know. Um, but that. All kinds of crazy chit. And then uh, this was stuck. Neighbors, I tried everything. I had to break this. This cost money because he cut one board with a saw and brought it back and said it doesn't start anymore. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Okay? I don't know. Saw ran and cut fine. He watched me cut with it. I don't know. But it was literally stuck on there. I had to cut it. It's still stuck on there. I still can't get the air filter off. I mean, everything that happened to cause that and, and him cutting one board. It's like, what are you gonna do? But basically, I can't tell my neighbor, well shit, you got bad luck like me, so now I'm gonna charge you because the saw is not running right that you just bought off of me. That's not warrantied, that was an as is saw. It's, this is not like one of my normal saws. Uh, he got a Frankensteel 028 for some roached saws he brought me. Uh, uh, Husqvarna 55 and an 026 which is somewhere damn I just debarred that thing oh it's sitting right here 026 um, so that's it but uh, as I watch these bubbles still come out and there's almost no pressure left in that thing um, one tiny pinhole one tiny grain of sand in your permatex can do this shit, you guys. It can. It's very rare and unlikely, but it does happen. That literally could be, even though I try very hard to work clean, I don't think I did work clean on that saw that day. And I'm going to go watch the footage. I'm going to dig it up. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find whatever footage I do have on whatever device or YouTube that it's on right now. And I'm going to see, did I work on a clean surface? I'm gonna see what the hell did I do wrong, if anything, to cause that. I don't think I did, unless it was not work on a clean surface. But you know, neighbors, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Um, and that is the reality. I'm in a tiny shed. Sometimes I don't have space to move things anywhere. It's literally piled up, like right now. Y'all know, you've seen it. Okay. There's all my sauce. Okay. Those bins are all clean saws waiting to be built. There's Rob Weaver's 028 Super. Shh, don't tell him. Hide it quick. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of saws I've been tearing down that need clean. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's two more back there. Okay. Uh, my bench is this big. 
that's what I have usually to here because of all the clutter and mess I have nowhere else for it okay so um, having to refuse that building was hard but I wasn't gonna submit to their bullying wickedness uh, there's the 028 that's being an asshole there's the 026 he traded in that was roached so this I know there's only a few of you here um, share this with your friends even if they don't like chainsaws make clips for them out of my videos shit you think is important that I say okay clip it out for them send it to them tell them just listen to this shit you might drown off into the chainsaw shit but when he's talking about other shit you might hear it and it might be important for your life it's it I know I might be a mess but I know the shit I got to say is important and I know I carry a, a certain level of uh, insight um, I've always been a, an observer of people's character and shit around me um, and I have a bit of wisdom into certain things that I think other people don't I'm not, I'm not better than anybody but but that's part of why I started this channel okay there's a lot of reasons but that's just part of it uh, I'll continue to tell you reasons why I started this channel you're gonna hear me say that's why I started this channel I don't mean that's one reason all right that's the one reason I mean that's just one of many reasons okay I just don't explain it that way every time uh, that's it neighbors really long video gonna try and edit it on the phone before I upload it to the internet so it will actually get there I'm just not good at editing it out I'm not good at cutting and trimming on the phone it's easier for me on the studio um, so we'll see what the hell happens be kind to one another everyone's facing a battle here's part of mine love you neighbors even though I suck at it let's keep persevering